welcome back. I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer, and if you are new to my channel, welcome. We're so excited that you're here. This channel is for you. If you um, just want to show up as the best version of yourself, right? If you want to have good energy, good hormones, if you want to get all your questions answered, if you want to look the best that you absolutely can, then this channel is definitely for you. Um, if you've been watching our videos all along, thank you, first of all. Um, and if you like the content that we're putting out, please go ahead, hit the like button, and share it with a friend because that just helps us get our content out there to more people so that we can help them. Um, in this week's video, we're talking about gray hairs. This is a question I get a lot in my office, right? And it's definitely something that I think the science is starting to catch up a little bit. So if you think about stress and gray hair, right? A lot of people will say that they notice that their hair uh, grays faster during times of stress. And most people who go through like a big psychological event will notice that their hair may go a little bit gray. Um, that can definitely depend on where you are in your life cycle, but even in, in like middle-aged younger people, those high levels of stress can definitely impact the amount of gray hairs that you have. So what was interesting is that research wasn't really caught up on this prior. And that although there was definitely some like anecdotal evidence, and if you talk to people like hairstylists, right? Like I talked to my hairstylist and my hairstylist was telling me that hair regrowth is kind of like you see it in plants, right? Where you can kind of see the state of the environment um, in that plant as it grows, and you can see that in the hair. So she was saying you can see if people like change their diet, um, if they're under higher levels of stress, if they're not sleeping, stuff like that, because the hair will actually change, which I thought was fascinating. Um, and she was saying like, basically you can't lie to your hairstylist because they'll see it in your hair, which I thought was really, really cool. So, um, it's interesting because there was definitely that anecdotal side of it, but the research hadn't really caught up. So up until about last year, I mean, there weren't any really great research studies impacting maybe the connection between premature graying and stress. Um, this year, they did a really interesting research study on 14 participants where they looked at um, their hairs under a high resolution scanner. And basically what this high resolution scanner allowed them to do was scan the pigment in the hair and really take a look at the hair. Um, and then they were able to correlate changes in the hair with a stress diary. So they had participants um, basically self-measure how stressed they were. And then they looked again and assessed the hair and they found that in periods of stress, graying actually increased. But what was most interesting in this study is that they found that when stress decreased in some patient, in some of the participants, they were able to see improvements in grain. So actually darkening of the hair again. So that's not only telling us that yes, stress is impacting the amount of gray hairs that we have, but maybe that if we got our stress under control and did things maybe nutrient wise, things like that, which we're gonna talk about later, to support our hair, maybe we would be able to reverse it. And there was actually um, one of the study participants went away on vacation and they found that throughout the course of his vacation, there was five hairs that went back to being dark, um, which is fascinating, like super, super fascinating. Um, so then this research study went on to look at maybe what could be causing this, right? So they assessed a whole bunch of proteins in the hair, a lot, a lot of proteins in the hair, and they found about 13 proteins that were changed um, in kind of periods of high stress. Then they went and they used a mathematical equation because science is really cool like that and found that the most likely culprit for this is um, mitochondrial changes and mitochondrial stress. So you've heard me talk a lot in this channel about mitochondria, right? We talk about everybody who knows or went to high school biology, right? Knows that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It creates your energy. Um, yes, that is one of the things that mitochondria does. The other things that mitochondria do that we've talked about is that they are the starting point for sex hormone production and they're the starting point for cortisol production. Um, and what's really, really important to think about with mitochondria is that they are super, super sensitive. They are basically little tiny divas and every single thing that upsets them really, really upsets them, right? So we talked about toxins being a huge um, impactor for mitochondria, but stress is also a huge impactor for mitochondria. And so this research study went on to maybe correlate um, mitochondrial health, right, in the hair with premature grain. So now I'm gonna lead into kind of talk about what 
causes your hair to have that dark color, right? So what causes your hair to have a dark color is actually um, a pigment called melanin. And um, at the base of your hair follicle, in the hair follicle, there's melanin stem cells that basically create melanocytes, right, which create melanin pigment. Um, as you age, those stem cells decrease, the, aman the amount of melanocytes created decreases, and then the melanin will decrease, which will decrease the pigment. Um, there are a couple things that we know impact melanin production and impact melanocytes, and one of those things is hydrogen peroxide. So one of the other theories on hair loss is um, hydrogen peroxide. So increases in hydrogen peroxide in the hair, which we naturally do make, we'll talk about that in a second, um, and then not enough levels of glutathione to basically be able to get rid of that hydrogen peroxide. So what does that look like, right? So basically, um, when you have increased amounts of stress, but also a lot of other things, right? You can increase your um, creation of reactive oxygen species. Particularly, um, there's one reactive oxygen species called, a, called superoxide, which is very damaging to the body. The body really, really doesn't like it. So it takes superoxide, puts it through an enzyme called superoxide dismutase and creates hydrogen peroxide. That's because we definitely don't want superoxide. We know it's very damaging to the body, so we turn it into something that's a little bit less damaging, right? Then, in theory, we're supposed to take that hydrogen peroxide, and glutathione should turn that hydrogen peroxide into water and oxidize glutathione. And what we found is that um, in gray hairs, we have higher levels of hydrogen peroxide, right? And that hydrogen peroxide then does impact that the melanocyte production and then the melanin production. So how is this all correlated together, right? Um, we know that with higher levels of stress, right, we do decrease our um, glutathione. Actually, initially in mild levels of stress, glutathione production will increase because it's protecting you against the stress. Um, but glutathione production can decrease. And on top of that, our reactive, our reactive oxygen species that our body makes increases during times of stress. Um, so if we kind of look at this as a big picture, right? Science hasn't quite said, here is the cure for gray hair. Definitely not what we're, what we're saying here. Um, but there is some kind of key themes that we can talk about, right? So one being mitochondrial health, and then one being the increase in glutathione, because we know glutathione decreases as we age. And what's interesting is that science has clearly showed that hair tends to have kind of a tipping point, right? So um, kind of like a bucket, right? You get to like, your bucket's almost full, almost full, your hair is gonna be the right color, right color, right color, and then it tips over the edge and then it's gray. Um, so when we're thinking about this, what treatment wise, right? Or I guess supportive wise would be a better way to put that, can patients think about? So what's interesting is that although glutathione is one of the things that I mentioned, right? For reducing hydrogen peroxide and um, turning hydrogen peroxide into water, um, giving glutathione on its, own, on its own is very, is usually quite ineffective. Glutathione requires a lot of other nutrients to work effectively. And so things like alpha lipoic acid, vitamin C, and we know vitamin C is greatly depleted under times of stress, right? Illness and stress plummet your vitamin C and you need that. Um, you need it to help recycle your glutathione so that you're able to use it. Um, vitamin E is another antioxidant that is necessary for the recycling of glutathione. And then things like CoQ10. Um, other things to think about is that that enzymatic reaction turning hydrogen peroxide into water and oxidized glutathione actually requires things like selenium. So we've talked about selenium a lot in our thyroid videos, right? Um, and a lot of people are selenium deficient. Well, if you don't have selenium, you won't make you won't be able to do that enzymatic reaction, which means maybe you have enough glutathione, maybe you just don't have the right cofactors. What's really interesting about these two things and where these two kind of schools of thought and research studies kind of marry each other is that a lot of the same nutrients for mitochondrial health are needed for glutathione um, recycling and glutathione production. It's interesting, things like alpha lipoic acid, CoQ10, right? Our mitochondria love alpha lipoic acid and CoQ10. Um, other things that are that our um, mitochondria love are things like riboflavin and molybdenum. So oftentimes, right, if we're thinking about times of high stress, is it necessarily that that um, 
stress is just causing gray hair? Probably not, right? There's a whole bunch of different factors that go in the middle of that. And a lot of those factors can be nutrient related. So things we know decrease in times of stress, vitamin C, B vitamins, um, CoQ10, right? So all these things that we're talking about. So if I was looking at supporting the reversal of gray hair, hopefully, but I mean, that's a tall order, right? But supporting kind of a normal um, hair growth or growing a better pigmented hair, I would seriously consider things like mitochondrial support. So alpha lipoic acid, like I mentioned, CoQ10, like I mentioned, um, and glutathione would be probably one of the later things that I would do, but like vitamin C, vitamin E, um, and making sure that we're not just taking single things because that almost never works, um, and are supporting that whole kind of antioxidant pathway and that whole mitochondrial renewal pathway. So this video did get science-y pretty quick, but I think it was full of a lot of really great information because research is showing that maybe there are things that we can do to help support ourselves. Um, on top of that, right, if we're looking not just at nutrients, helping to reduce your stress as much as humanly possible is gonna be really, really important. So getting out into nature, um, taking a walk, meditating, getting to sleep on time, right? All of these things are gonna help if you are feeling like your stress is impacting your hair quality and your hair production. Um, what questions do you have about the things that we talked about today? And have you ever had an experience where you've been super stressed and have actually like noticed your hair graying? Um, tell me in the comments below and we'll see you next week for next week's video.